Hey guys, it's Mel. Welcome to my channel. Okay, so this video is my top five of 2019. So my top five books for the year, my top five TV shows for the year, and my top five book into film or TV adaptations of the year. So for those of you that have been around for a little while, you will have noticed that I am quite a backlist reader. So I don't think that many if in fact any of the books that are in my top five were released in 2019 but they are things that I have experienced for the first time in 2019. Anyway I'm going to start with my top five books of 2019 which is actually a total lie because I couldn't decide between two books so it's actually six although two of the books hold the sort of same place if you will. So I'm going to start from the bottom of the list and go up to the top of the list. So the book in number five place is The Binding by Bridget Collins. I really, really enjoyed it. It was captivating. It was amazing. It was weird. It was totally just left me reeling basically and I have been thinking about it on and off all year so it definitely belongs in this list. So two of my best friends came to visit me in the first week of January and stayed for a week or roughly um, and one of them bought this book with her and she was reading it while she was here and she was like Mel I think you will absolutely love this so I'm gonna leave it with you. She's actually coming again to visit in late January 2020 so I'll be able to return it to her then um, but anyway I've hung on to it I took it overseas and read it while I was in Thailand yeah I'm not really sure what to say about this book it is like I said it's very weird um, the basic premise of the book is that books are kind of sacred and that is because books are actually the legitimate memories of people there are certain types of people in this land called binders and what they can do is actually take the memories of people out of their brain and put them into books and bind them in books um, so there are just general books around but they're viewed with great suspicion but of course there is all sorts of corruption and um, underhanded dealings within the world of binding people's memories get sold off as books um, slaves and servants get um, their memories forcibly taken by their masters, um, all of this sort of thing. So the main narrator of the story is this young man, um, I've totally forgotten his name, but you learn towards the end of the first section that he's actually an unreliable narrator. His memories, some of his memories have been bound into a book. It's all about that and it's, it's kind of, it's weird that I really like this book because there's not a huge amount of world building, there's actually not a huge amount of plot, um, but there's a lot of mystery uh, surrounding all of the magic and what's happened to this young man and to his um, friend slash lover um, and where their memories have gone and why their memories have been taken, who chose to have their memories taken and it's about him trying to find his memories once he figures out that he's, he's been bound. Um, he tries to find the memories and yeah it's just it's really really interestingly and well written it invokes a lot of amazing um, imagery and descriptions are really beautiful um, I really like the characterization of the main three characters so the main three characters are the young man who is the binder and his tutor and then his lover and I don't remember any of their names. The imagery and the the sort of sense of the book have stayed with me this whole time and I found it really um, evocative and just beautifully written and even though there isn't a huge amount of storyline, what there is is really well crafted and I just I really enjoyed it. In the number four spot is actually the two books that I can't decide between. So the first one of these is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Ruthless. I have talked a little bit more about that in um, my September wrap up I think which I will link below as well. Um, but it is a really well written fantasy. It starts out being about an innkeeper called Coat um, and it turns out that 
he's not really an innkeeper called Coat. He is, in fact, um, a character who sort of is from myth and legend now uh, called Quoth, and he is telling his story uh, to a chronicler um, or a scribe and he's telling a story about what happened to him as a young man and how he got into the university to learn um, how to be a, an arcanist which is the kind of magic worker that is in this universe and yeah it's just it's really well written it's really interesting um, the characters are really well executed the plot is really interesting and I like the way it goes backwards and forwards between Quoth telling his story and what's happening in present time um, so yeah that's either number four or Jurassic Park which I had to return to the library so you should see it there. Um, Jurassic Park was a book that I read this year that I wasn't expecting to like as much as I did. I do enjoy the movies, um, particularly the first one. I watched that when it came out and, you know, it was a lot of fun. And I never read the book. I didn't actually even realise it was based on a book until this year. Anyway, I read the book and I started reading the book thinking, oh yeah, this will be a bit of fun. And it's actually a lot more intelligent and a lot more um, thoughtful and well-written than I was anticipating it to be. And I actually ended up sitting down and reading the entire book in one sitting. So it's 450-page paperback um, and I have definitely falling fallen out of the habit of doing that I sat down and started reading it and didn't stop until about eight o'clock that night when it was done um, so yeah that was either Jurassic Park or The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss um, sorry I should say Jurassic Park was written by Michael Crichton uh, the number third spot goes to Rivers of London by Ben Aronovich. This is a book that I read relatively recently. Um, it is a supernatural, magical realism mystery story. <laughs> so it's set in present day London. Uh, it turns out that present day London is a magical realm um, full of all sorts of mythical creatures like um, water nymphs and stuff like that who are currently at war with each other, there's ghosts around, there's um, all sorts of things like that. The main character Peter Grant is a police officer for the Metropolitan Police Force in London and he is just a regular old police officer until he um, is approached by a ghost who is the witness to a murder and he interviews the ghost and then he kind of gets sucked into this realm of ghosts and otherworldly supernatural creatures um, that he didn't know existed until he does. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was really well written. I thought it was really interesting, well paced, um, a nice amount of action and um, a good amount of sort of the process of, of mystery um, stories and, and the whodunit sort of aspect. And alongside of that is a bunch of supernatural, um, paranormal entities which are woven really well into this overarching idea of a murder mystery so yeah I really really enjoyed it it's the first book in a series so I'm really keen to pick up the next lot of books second place goes to Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine which should be somewhere here I just absolutely love this book I was really surprised again to find that I really enjoyed this book I wasn't anticipating loving it as much as I did um, but I just thought that it was really really well written. Um, the character of Eleanor Oliphant is not a particularly likeable character. She definitely has some likeable qualities but she also definitely definitely has some unlikable qualities. She's also another unreliable narrator. As the story progresses you find out more and more about her life and her experiences and her backstory. She goes from being someone who seems very well together, very sure of herself, um, very antisocial and and very sort of 
socially inept but very sure of herself within that to discovering that maybe that's not quite the case and there's a lot of stuff going on for her um, to do with her backstory there's some stuff that she talks about that it turns out aren't actually happening uh, in real time so yeah it's it's just it's great it's really well written. Um, it's actually quite a lot heavier than you would think as well. There's a lot of uh, trauma in her life that she's that she ends up um, trying to overcome, and a lot of loneliness and a lot of barriers being put up. But yeah, it's it's just explores that really well, and but I think with um, a really good amount of self-deprecation. It's a serious story, but it doesn't take itself super seriously. It isn't trying to be the answer to any of those things. It's just telling a story, which I really appreciated. Anyone that's watched my videos for a little while will probably not be at all surprised by what number one is, and that is Cersei by Madeline Miller. Circe is a retelling of a few different Greek myths centered around the goddess Circe um, and it's her life story, her backstory. It's really well written, it really humanizes this goddess. It gives you a lot of interesting information about Greek mythology um, but at the same time it is actually well written and well crafted as, an, as a really enjoyable story to read even if you don't like Greek mythology although having said that I study Greek mythology and classics in general at university so I don't know whether or not you would need to have a background in that area to enjoy the book um, but I absolutely loved it. Five star book, thought it was fantastic and it is my my top book of the year of 2019. So that was my five top books for 2019. Of course I do have other books that I've really enjoyed um, and I did kind of cheat because I gave those two as number four. Now I'm going to move on to top five TV shows that I've watched this year. Like I said, most of these won't have been released this year in 2019 but they're all TV shows that were new to me in 2019 so here we go. Number five is Unbelievable which is a fictional story based on a true story about a young woman who was raped um, in her, in her own home and she reports this rape to the police and because a variety of different reasons and, and circumstances the police don't end up believing her and actually end up charging her for false reporting so she's the one that's that's charged instead of the attacker so that's the first bit of the story um, and then the way the story is told it flits between her and then five years later when two police officers who actually work for separate county um, police departments start investigating a series of rapes and there are a lot of similarities between these rapes and they start collaborating together to see if they can find out who it was and through the course of their investigations they discover the woman who the young girl who was raped however many years before and accusation that was made against her and the charge that was brought against her um, and it's about their investigation and what she's going through and then it's about the culmination of them figuring that that out and her being um, vindicated my battery is running low um, I don't have a second one so I'm gonna have to charge it and then come back and film some more so that's what I'm gonna do okay so hopefully that is enough charge to make the rest of this video uh, anyway I was talking about uh, unbelievable and yeah it is it's unbelievable that all of these things happen to this young woman uh, of course there are lots of trigger warning for rape and sexual assault. I wouldn't recommend it if those are things that are triggers for you. Uh, but it's definitely really, really well acted, really, really well put together, really well written. Um, yeah, it's just, it's gritty, it seems very realistic and it's great. Next up is number four and that is Community. 
I don't know when Community was released, but I am watching it for the first time properly at the moment. Rowan and I are watching it together and we're up to season five. Rowan has seen it all before and absolutely loves it. Um, I've watched episodes here and there, but never actually sat down and watched it from start to finish, which I'm now doing and I'm really, 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 really enjoying it. Um, it is satirical and comedic. It is a kind of TV show that pokes fun at um, American sitcoms and that kind of genre. It pokes fun at uh, the American education system. It pokes fun at uh, lots of different genres and different tropes. Um, one of the main characters, Abed, is very aware of pop culture and he um, is sort of the meta narrator of the series so he's always sort of talking about their lives as though they were a um a comedy show and a tv show and he's always talking to the camera and breaking that fourth wall um, but it's done in a really clever intelligent way which i think is really great it's about seven characters who enroll in a community college with a very bad reputation um that doesn't have a very good teaching staff the dean is terrible terrible at his job and these characters for various reasons have enrolled in this community college uh, there's a disgraced lawyer there's um, people going through midlife crises um, some young people who just didn't get the qualification uh, didn't get the marks that they needed or don't have the money to get into a better university um, and anyway they enroll in this a Spanish course and they form a study group and they end up becoming best friends and it's just about all their different uh, adventures and different crazy things that they get up to yeah it's just it's a lot of fun next up is another comedy and that is Brooklyn Nine-Nine uh, again I don't think that was released in 2019 but Rowan and I watched it in 2019 and we really 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 enjoyed it it is uh, based around the 99th precinct in the Metropolitan Police in Brooklyn um, and it's all sorts of crazy silliness um, it's another irreverent show it is based around a squad of some very crazy silly likeable and yet very flawed cops um, who work in this precinct and detectives basically and yeah it's just about their lives and what they get up to and the silliness that they um, get up to on a daily basis so it's a lot of fun in number two place is avatar the last airbender and this is another tv show that is one of rowan's favorites and i never got around to watching it um he did start showing it to me last year sometime 2018 and i think i watched two episodes but i must have just not been in the right headspace for it or something because i didn't really enjoy it that much and we stopped watching it uh this year however he started showing it to me again and i thought it was fantastic it is very very well written and uh voice acted and very well animated and it's just a great deal of fun and um the world building in it is really fantastic um and everything kind of fits together really nicely and the characters are really well characterized and yeah it's just a great deal of fun and a really enjoyable television program it takes place in a world which is very loosely based on our own and in that world are magic users who are known as benders there are four different nations they are aligned to the four main elements so there's the fire nation water nation earth nation and air nation um, and all they can bend those elements so the fire benders bend fire and so on um, and the action starts when there's been a war between the fire nation and the rest of the world for the last hundred years um, and there is a sort of holy person who is called the avatar he's someone that could stop the war but disappeared uh, over 100 years ago and uh, there's not been an avatar since 
and an avatar is special because he or she can bend all four elements. The last avatar was an airbender. All of the airbenders have been completely wiped out during the war and then the avatar reappears um, and he's young, he's about 12 year old boy and he is found frozen in ice along with his animal companion who is a flying bison um, called Appa and he's found by a brother and sister from the Southern Water Tribe, um, Katara and uh, Soka. So Katara and Soka find Aang, which is the avatar, um, frozen with Appa. Somehow, I can't remember how, he's released and yes, yeah, so he's a very young avatar. He only really knows how to um, airbend so they go on a mission with him to try and help him to figure out how to do all of the other kinds of bending so that he can stop the war and it's about their adventures and um, the fire nation and what they're up to and the various different nations and all the different um, political situation in the world and really particularly these um, three main characters and then there's a couple of other characters who become really important to the story as well. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's really well animated, well written and well acted and I really, really enjoyed it. My top five TV shows for 2019 goes to The Haunting of Hill House. I thought this was so, so well done. The actors are phenomenal. The pacing of the story of the show makes it really creepy. Um, it's more of a psychological thriller than it is just a ghost story, although there are definitely ghosts and supernatural entities. Um, it plays with time. It plays with perception. It plays with our understanding of, of the world and how perception can influence how you then behave um, what you believe influences how you feel about things and therefore um, your fears and anxieties and yeah it plays with a lot of those sorts of ideas but like I said there's also actual hauntings and actual ghost story ghosts around um, but it's also about our own demons and our own ghosts that affect us in our lives so yeah, it's really good. It's really well written. It's really well paced and creepy. There's um, a really good amount of jump scares, but not too many jump scares. They, they're just the right amount of creepiness and um, and that kind of spine tingling feeling. Um, and yeah, I just, I really, really enjoyed it. Not a type of TV show that I would have expected to have as my number one pick for the year but it just I couldn't go past it it was just really 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 exceptional I really recommend that you go and watch it all right so the top five book into film or tv show adaptations for 2019 these are all adaptations that I've watched in 2019 although I may have read the book prior to 2019 I didn't watch the adaptation until 2019. In the fifth position in this list is The Children Act. The book was written by Ian McEwan and it was made into a movie earlier this year with Stanley, Stanley Tucci and Emma Watson. Sorry, Emma Thompson. I didn't love the book. I thought it was quite good and quite interesting but it it wasn't my favourite of the year, but it was definitely well worth a read. But I thought that the movie adaptation was really, really well done. I love Emma Thompson and Stanley Tucci. I think they are very, very talented actors, um, and I thought they did a really great job. So the movie is quite strange. Uh, it is about a judge who is called upon to preside over a trial where a underage so 17 year old young man is dying of cancer I think and his parents are Jehovah's Witnesses and Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in um, anesthesia. I don't know if I, I'm having a word blank, I don't know if I'm saying that right but anyway they don't believe in that so he needs um, he needs surgery but they won't let him be put under and so the hospital have taken them to court so that they can uh, do this. 
procedure. So anyway, she's presiding over it. She goes to see him in the hospital to see his point of view um, and she kind of gets embroiled in his life and then they kind of almost have an affair but don't. Um, yeah, it's quite strange but it's very well written and the movie is really, really well done. Number four is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. My book into film club watched the movie adapt the recent movie adaptation and we thought that it was really great. It was really well done. Um, it was really it was just lovely. It was just really nice. It was nice, well paced, well written, um, fun, engaging, sad at times, and well acted and just really lovely and and interesting so that's number four. Coming in at number three is Sharp Objects. This is a television program based on the novel by the same name by Gillian Flynn who wrote Gone Girl. Um, I actually prefer the book to Gone Girl and the TV series to the movie Gone Girl. The TV show has a uh, Amy Adams in it who is a fantastic actor uh, that I really really enjoy and I really like most of the things that she's been in including an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer which as anyone who has seen my first top five list video will know is my all-time favorite television show anyway just a side note so anyway Sharp Objects is about a woman in her mid 30s I think and I have once again completely forgotten her name um, but she has a lot of issues from her childhood um, surrounding her mum and it turns out that her mum has Munchausen by proxy yeah so it's about how this woman has now grown up and moved away from home moved out of the town and has become a reporter and there are a series of murders in her hometown and so she goes back to she's sent to her hometown to investigate these murders and as a byproduct of that she is thrown back into her family life and having to deal with her mother and um, her mother's illness and her younger sister and all of her own issues from her childhood and um, learning about what her mother has actually done and what is wrong with her mother. She, she doesn't actually know that her mother has this illness so it's her learning what that is and how that has worked and the consequences it has wrought on her life um, and on her family's life and that gets tied up in the actual murder um, and yeah it's just it's really really well written and the book and the TV show is really well acted um, it's not intended as a horror in the same way that The Haunting of Hill House was but I actually found it creepier um, just because it's really kind of awful what we are capable of doing to ourselves and each other but nonetheless fantastic adaptation. I will just say that the last three uh, adaptations that I talked about stayed pretty close and pretty true to the books. That's not entirely the case with the next two um, although I didn't really feel that the changes that were made they certainly didn't detract from the overall story or from the way that something that is made into a movie or a TV show is different obviously from a book um, and so some of the changes were made to further the story in a way that you do on screen that you wouldn't do in a book. Um, but I didn't feel that there were as many changes in those first three that I mentioned as in the next two. I will start now by talking about my number two pick and that is Big Little Lies. The book was written by Leanne Moriarty. The TV show, it is my number two pick for 2019 adaptations and I just thought it was really really well done it's an absolutely fantastic uh, book I really really enjoyed it and I thought that it was adapted into a really 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 fantastic um, TV show the main change that took place was that it was set 
in Sydney in Australia and the book and the TV show was set in Los Angeles and some people uh, some friends of mine have not liked that they've been they found that kind of annoying it didn't actually bother me I didn't think that it took away from the story at all um, I'm not sure exactly why they did it Nicole Kidman is in the TV show and she's Australian but that's beside the point uh, so that was number two um, and the number one spot goes to Good Omens the book is a book written by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman it is a fantastic book one of my favorite books of all time and the TV show was made this year it stars David Tennant and Michael Sheen the main change that they made to that TV show was they actually brought those two actors characters further forward into um, the overall story uh, it, it was just part of the story before whereas now it's sort of the main part of the story um, but that didn't bother me I thought that it focused the television program and I just thought that it was really well done I think David Tennant and Michael Sheen do a fantastic job in their respective roles so their characters are a demon named Crowley and an angel named Azraphale, um, David Tennant and Michael Sheen respectively and it is basically about an apocalypse that doesn't happen. Um, so the Antichrist is born into the world and he's supposed to be brought up um, by, by evil forces and influenced by demons so that he will um, bring about the apocalypse except that there's a mishap when he's born and the antichrist actually goes to live with just a normal english um family in a normal english country town and yeah then it's 11 years later when the apocalypse is supposed to start happening and it's just about that and Azraphale and Crowley band together to try and stop the apocalypse because it turns out that they actually really like earth and living on earth and experiencing all the things that earth has to offer that you wouldn't get in either hell or heaven um, and it's them yeah trying to stop the apocalypse and all of the toings and froings between heaven and hell and earth in the middle and it's great the book is great the tv show is great it's just all great I highly recommend both definitely check them out um, particularly if you like mythology magical realism um, angels versus demons uh, good versus evil uh, if you like Neil Gaiman or Terry Pratchett or both of them you definitely should check it out I just I can't recommend it highly enough <sighs> Anyway, I am going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you in agree with my picks of any of these picks, please comment below and let me know which ones you really loved and what you thought of them in general. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite books, TV shows, book adaptations, movies, anything really were for 2019. Um, yeah, I'd love to have a chat with you. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you next time.